Well, today is the day. She is all dressed up for the party. This is the big one. Um, everything else you can take off and repaint and stuff, so this is always a little bit nerve-wracking. So, um, we're ready to go. We'll see how this turns out. Say a prayer for me. It's the aftermath. And Short story, TLDR. We're going to have to fix a couple things and reshoot. Um, let's go over... Let's go over that stuff, alright? First off, you see that? A little problem right there? Alright, that's just a miss. I missed that. This, uh, that's my, that's my trunk delete. There's so much going on. It feels, it feels okay, but you can see it. And I should have, this is, this is why before the uh, final step, people high build again. Um, again, the reason why I didn't was because I really wanted to get epoxy primer. I wanted to get the car sealed up since I stripped it all down to bare metal and stuff. So I figured... All right, uh, even though the epoxy primer stage screwed up, which is why it looks like garbage, um, even though that screwed up, I'm going to, well, let me back up. So the that step screwed up, and I was like, all right, well, fine. I'll take, uh, I'll take some color, and I'll just, I'll just do like these portions, you know? Just so at least that whenever I come back and I reshoot the car, I can just tape up this edge. And, you know, my, my engine bay, it's all, it's all, uh, you know, it's pretty close. So, uh, that was my thought process. And whenever I shot it, I was like, well, heck, I mean, it's not too bad. So, I just made a cup made a whole cup of avalanche gray and I was like all right well let's see what happens so I sprayed it on the car and the more I thought about it the more I realized that it's my opinion maybe it was the wrong way to do this I don't know um a lot of guys would have stopped you stop you wet sand the epoxy primer then you do your base coat all right my base coat's pretty clear or rather it's single stage so it Clear. Sorry, my uh, my color is fairly cheap because it's single stage, it's non-metallic, you know. So I was like, all right, what am I going to spend? Like forty bucks on some material? I got a gallon of the stuff, so I made. I shot, I think, about ten ounces. Ten ounces covered the entire body of the car really well. If it had something good to stick to. Um, and I was able to, like if it had, if the, if the sealer coat, if the, the substrate underneath was good, I would have, it wouldn't, it wouldn't look so dry. I would have went back over it and shot another, uh, thick layer, another layer of, uh, the single stage stuff. And it would have given me a lot to work with. I could have, you know, I'm feeling trash and stuff in here. But I could have I could have buffed that out probably. So, um, but I knew that the that this this base layer is not very good. You see the streaks; it's kind of unevenly applied. Like all of it should basically look like this, but it's not. I I, I really I, I think I bit off more than I could chew. So. 
you know, uh, go big or go home. Uh, and sometimes, sometimes you, uh, go big and you, uh, sometimes you, sometimes it doesn't work out. That's okay though. Um, all right, so let's go over the good stuff. First good thing, the car is a hundred percent sealed now. So epoxy primer, bad, bad epoxy primer slash sealer job and all. Uh, it's sealed up. So we got some things to fix, but uh, not going to have to worry about rust or anything like that if I get some sprinkles on it. Um, let's see, what's the, what's the other good thing? Oh, the other good thing, yeah, look at those lines. I'm pretty happy with that. I mean, I, I don't think I'm going to get better than that. That's... That's good. I missed a couple spots well, as far as body work is concerned. I doubt you can see it. It's very subtle. But there's like, a, there's this little, like right here. I don't think you can see it on the camera. But there's basically, it looks like somebody kind of whacked it with a door at some point. There's a very slight thing I need to work out. This is a clear mess. This whole deck, this whole deck lid is going to get uh, redone. Not redone totally, but basically, uh, everything's getting wet sanded, and this is definitely, uh, it's gonna get a little more work. See, I can feel that. So, another cool thing. See, everything should basically look like this guy. Nice and shiny. See, there you are. Nice and shiny. Yeah, looks nice. I went ahead and reassembled it. Obviously. This turned out really good. This turned out really nice. I'm very happy with this thing. So, put the door handles back on. Because, you know, it's going to be a little while before I reshoot it. And I think I can, I think it'll be fun to redo it with the door handles on. So, um, that's the good stuff. It's all sealed up. The lines are good. I did a lot of things to the car. And really the only issue that I've had is this trunk delete part that I just straight up missed. And, you know, it's my fault. I should have, I should have uh, probably done another coat of, build primer all across that deck lid and done I should have done a skim coat of Bondo basically so yeah that's where we are I got uh, some wet sandpaper coming so I'm gonna I'm gonna, I'm, I'm gonna take a little break from this uh, put the wheels back on and I might yeah Oh, I'm just rambling. It's a lot to take in. So here's here's where we here's where we really messed up this. I think I can clay bar this stuff off. That is a sealer that blew past my little uh, uh, tapey deal, my little rim foam tape stuff. And here's some more gray stuff. So. And this, this side's really the worst. So you can see right there, see that junk? That's garbage. And then we go in here and I, and it all really started because I was using a gun. Well, I'll go in that, into that in a second. But basically uh, this 3M foam tape stuff, if you cake it on, it'll glue your door shut. And that's exactly what it did. So that was a bummer, but uh, sometimes you win, sometimes you lose, but if you learn something, you always win. You always win something. So, so here's what we learned. Uh, this, this, that's not good enough. And I was using this on the gun 
okay? This works, this is good, but whenever you get down here to do like small stuff, you hit the ground, the bottom of the gun hits the ground. So that was, that was a big learning thing. Uh, if you new air filter and water, I have a water and air filter, air filter. I got a new system coming that uh, it's more, it's like pro grade type stuff. So that's, that's going to be that. Um, so that'll take care of that problem. The main issue that I had initially was this gun. This is a great gun, but that's a lot of car. Well, it's not a lot of car, but it's a lot of surface area. This gun, this is being a suction feed, my little air compressor out there, this is fine for like doing a hood or like cutting in some stuff, but it just ran out of gas and it's not the gun's fault. It's my, it's my own, uh, my system's fault. So, uh, whenever I switch to this cheap little Campbell Hausfeld, that's where things really turned around. Uh, this is what I used to shoot that. So, so that's what, um, that's a big, that's a big thing right there. Um, I'm going to use HVLP. I might get a better HVLP gun. This gun's really good. Well, I won't say really good. This gun is fine. But I think I'm just too far into it, man. I might as well just get a good gun. I don't know. Um, all right, so what else did we learn? Learned how to not tape up this stuff. On this edge, at the bottom of this door, if you use this 3M phone tape, make sure on the inside of this door, you put some masking tape facing the outside because here's what happened. You see that? That little gritty stuff? That's, uh, that's where the 3M foam tape soaked in. And again, part of this is my fault because like, look how thick this stuff is. It's really, it's, it's my, it's a hundred percent my fault. Just inexperience. Um, it's supposed to keep it from having a tape line, but Hey, guess what? That doesn't work if you're caking it on because you're having troubles with your gun and all kinds of stuff, uh, which is basically what I did. Problems, you see, if you see the theme here, problems are compounding. And this is where experience comes into play. I am not a professional painter. I've just kind of messed around with this stuff for years. I worked in a body shop. I've shot some stuff. Um, maybe it's possible that this job is too big for me. Clearly, clearly this job uh, is too big for me or else it would be done right, right? That's the test. So, but hey, that's part of life, you know? You, you learn, you grow, and you either get better, or you realize, hey, maybe I really ought to hire this done. And honestly, I'm kind of, I'm kind of at that point. Maybe, maybe it being sealed up at this point, the body lines are exactly where I want them, everything, Everything's where I want it to where I could take it to a shop and be like, hey guys, I got this thing like 100 yards from the finish line. Um, you don't have to adjust anything. It's all sealed up. It just needs wet sand, sealer, and color. That's it. You know, maybe. Or maybe I man up, we fix this contraption, and we're, uh, we, we actually pull it off. I think we got really close. Because this is like, look at this. This is, this is just about, it's not great. Okay. It's a lot of orange peel and stuff. But this, a couple coats of this, this is salvageable if you have a good substrate. Don't have a good substrate. So, that's that. So what are the takeaways? Um, 
yeah, we're gonna fix we're gonna fix it. We're gonna wet sand this thing and we're gonna try again. Because now we can wet sand it without uh, water soaking in to get to the primer underneath, get to the metal and rust it out and stuff. So Yep, that's where we are. Okay, so kind of a fail, but um, here's how I look at things. All right, you could say total failure, OMG, give up, pay someone to do it. You could. Or you could just say, hey, my time is just not worth it at this point. I've got it to where somebody else could take it and run with it. I don't have to uh, nitpick about body alignment parts, all that junk. Yep, could do that. That's an option I'm honestly considering. Or another option is we assess and we try again. So here's what we're gonna do next. Definitely, I'm gonna wet sand, I'm gonna give it a couple days, I'm then I'm gonna wet sand this roof. Then I'm gonna reshoot this roof. Uh, Probably going to shoot epoxy primer back on it again and then do color. And the reason I'm doing that is I got to get this glass back in. I think I'm actually really confident that even if I shot it, I could shoot it with the glass back in. Um, I don't think that'd be a big deal, even the windshield. But be patient and, you know, eliminate things that can go wrong increases your odds of success, right? So we do that, we get the glass back in, we get this glass back in. Now we got a sealed up car, okay? Then we kind of have a different scenario whenever we go to paint this thing. Then we have, we have glass that we can tape to all along here. Um, I do the door jams better this time. I wet sand the car, just get it perfect, perfect. And, and I use the right gun with the right setup. That might be the ticket. Cause that was, the roof is where everything went sideways at first. Because what happened was, I was using this big gun. Let me check this out. Look at this. Imagine this, okay? I'm 6'2", right? You're doing this. But you're also trying not to touch that body. So, you know, that's... Oh, learning is hard sometimes. Wow, this is going long. All right, I'm going to wrap it up. Hey everybody, uh, take care of one another and uh, try big things because you'll never accomplish big things unless you uh, go after the big thing. Failure is just a learning experience if you look at it the right way. All right, peace out Girl Scouts. Take care of one another. I'm going to go play video games or something that's fun later.